After graduating from Texas A&M, he figured acting was the way he was meant to make a living, and doing it in Hollywood proved tougher than he had thought. Deciding he needed to take his craft seriously, he headed to New York City and Lee Strasberg's actor's studio. His work on the stage eventually led to his role in the original cast of both the Broadway production and the film version of Tennessee Williams' Sweet Bird of Youth, cementing both a friendship with Williams and a reputation as an actor to be reckoned with. Eventually, he made his way back to the silver screen and was featured in the films Porkchop Hill, The Cincinnati Kid, and The Man Who Fell to Earth. In the early 60s, he married stage and screen actress Geraldine Page, with whom he remained married until her death in the mid-80s. Many cite his move toward comedic roles as what has kept him relevant and in demand, from his award-winning turn as Artie on The Larry Sanders Show to the role of network head Don Geist on Tina Fey's hit sitcom, 30 Rock. In a career that has spanned over 50 years, he has also appeared in such films as Coma, The Beastmaster, Extreme Prejudice, Defending Your Life, How to Make an American Quilt, Dodgeball, B-Movie, and Men in Black. Hello, I'm Ernie Manus. On this episode of Interviews, our conversation with Oscar-nominated and Emmy Award-winning actor Rip Torn. How different is it working with family in this business as opposed to being out there on your own? I think to work with your children and, and to see how great they are. I feel that way about all my kids. And she's awesome, Angelica. Yeah. And it is, a, it's like a B12 shot or taking a talent pill or something. I mean, just, uh, uh, I didn't know at, at the time uh, that it could be so much fun uh, until I worked with Angelica and some of her friends. Yeah. So uh, anytime they call on me, I'm there. Uh, she's, uh, Angelica's had classes with the greatest people and, and that are still around. Yeah. And uh, continues to work, and it's taken her uh, one woman show about Sylvia Plath all over the world. Yeah. And didn't even have an understudy there. Uh, Eli was on the stage when he was a little boy, and uh, was my grandson over there. Where did he go? <laughs> okay. He's wandered away, I think. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, you saw him earlier. And uh, he just. Uh, they always say in the theater, don't don't get on the stage with a, an animal or a child, you know. But but he was perfectly at home, and uh, so uh, we've done a lot of shows together. Um, I promised myself uh, I won't get emo emotional, but. Uh, I'm thrilled to know my, my children. Yeah. Now, a lot of people asked me when they knew I was going to sit down with you to ask, Rip Torn, is that name for real? It is. It's a family name, correct? Uh, Rosen, who's still living, my, my aunt, and Wallenberg, all my people were either in uh, agriculture or were county agents, like my cousin Sissy. Her, her father was a county agent. Sam, my late uncle, I have a raft of people, and they all know that that our real name was is Torn, T-O-R-N. We all went to A&M, and, &M. and uh, also I had an uncle here in Houston who was in the FBI, Roland Torn, and he called himself the Big Rip. But I think <laughs> my dad was really the the bigger Rip. Yeah. And so. Um, uh, I, when I found out that I could act, I, I went to the University of Texas, although I was studying architecture, that was my skill. 
uh, professor guy, I'm still get choked up about it. He says, that's your natural talent. What the hell are you doing? When you talk about your background and what you came out of, was it embracing when you said to them all, I want to be an actor? Was that received well by the family? No, I kept it a big secret. I mean, I knew who, who what the hell would they want me to be an actor for. Yeah. It's very hard work. Oh, yeah. You just try to uh, to create characters. And I always used to start with how somebody walks. Yeah. I said, look at, look at the way that everybody walks different. Tell me about life in the theater. I've done Hamlet uh, a number of times, and, and uh, I'm going to have another crack at it. Yeah? Because uh, I can still run like a deer, and, and all the guys that have tried to clock me when I happen to be in the wrong place, they don't get away with it. You were saying, as far as it comes to working, you haven't missed a day's work. Never. Never have. Worked with broken Wouldn't arm. think about it. Really? <laughs> what, where does that come from, that commitment to your craft? I think it's kind of tech, because it's... Yeah. <laughs> don't you think so? Yeah, I guess so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's slopping around or something like that, or, or sneaking out to play golf when you got to go to work. I know, like in New York City, the Teamsters say about me, they say, uh, that damn guy would do anything for a buck. I says, that's right, how about getting me a, a, a Teamster card, then I'll really make some money. <laughs> then you should make the money, yeah. <laughs> now, you went to L.A. first. You went to Hollywood first and then went to New York, correct? Well, actually, according to my parents, my mother, Thelma Torn, late Thelma Torn, and my dad, Elmore, they, uh, they went to... Uh, New York on their honeymoon, and they claim that's where I was conceived. That's where it all started, started right? life, <laughs> yeah. So I was born on Ronald Reagan's birthday. Ah, another great actor. <laughs> another great actor. Well, he was okay. Yeah. He, we did, always he turned say out okay just, in the just, end. <laughs> uh, I was good, great friends with Burl Ives. I was the understudy to Paul Newman and uh, uh, Sweet Bird of Youth. Right. I was Ben Gazzara's understudy. Uh, I know that they say the greatest actors uh, always played themselves. Well, you got to play yourself, but Duke Wayne, uh, John Wayne, was a, and he was a fraternity brother of mine. Uh, we're both we're Sigma Chi's, yeah. and uh, he was a hell of a hard-working guy. He certainly knew how to ride. He knew how to let the horse work for him and act for him. You talk about these contemporaries of yours, and right. so many of them are classic names today. Right. Is it just time that's made them classics, or was there something about the generation of actors that you're part of that was just very special? Well, they were stage actors to start with. Uh, it's people that, that will take the time to do, do the training, yeah. to go uh, not just... Uh, uh, when you finish a night's work and just go out and raise hell all night, you get to get up in the morning. Uh, we're up at 7 in the morning. If we're going to get a chance to get an hour, we may sleep till 8. That's mm -hmm. the kind of people, hard, hard-working people. Yeah. And Jerry uh, said, all you need is time on the stage. And didn't say in front of the camera. Right. I think a lot of people think when they think of your career, because it spans so many decades, that it was just from the time you started, you were working nonstop, and that it was an easy street. But it is a lot of work, and oh, you've it's, had it's staying not, power. If you think it's an easy s street, you, 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 you have to relax. Yeah. But so you have to relax when you're getting up there to take a swing at the ball, or you're going out in the flat for a pass. You, I've, I've had those skills, too. So Tell me about your experiences in early television. Uh, uh, I, did li I did live television, too, and so I don't get all choked up if, I have, if something gets wrong and they, they say, we're going to have to ad-lib this and I'll change all the blocking. And I just say, uh, with cameras, you just say, they said, how do you know which camera is looking at you? I said, it's got a red eye. Yeah, see that, <laughs> that gives eye. it away. Yeah. <laughs>
I never fall down in front of the camera. I've never fallen down on the stage. Yeah, once I got pushed off the stage and, and, <laughs> and went down in the pit, but I was I was able to avoid the the uh, the piano and uh, and just hit the keys, and I think it probably saved my life. One guy once I don't know what he did. He he just walked off the stage, but we were doing a live television show, and they came and said, uh, "He's gone." I don't know what happened to him. I said, well, why are you looking at me? He said, well, you've been playing with him. You're, you know, <laughs> you might have heard his lines better than we. You, I said, well, what if I can't remember all of them? They said, we, we know you. You can make something up. <laughs> Just go with it. <laughs> so, so, so that's the way they, they uh, when I worked a lot with Willie Nelson and, and Bud Schrake, who was a, a great writer, he said, people said, I am sick and tired of walking around Congress Avenue and somebody saying, Bud, that line you gave Rip was so funny. He said, oh, that's one of his ad libs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Do you remember the first time you saw Geraldine Page? I was, at a, a, like I said, an understudy. And, and uh, I, I saw her at, uh, at the actor studio because right. she would do a lot of work there. And... Uh, so oh. she liked me. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Right. Yeah. But uh, but I feel they. I never heard her say any word of a derogatory nature against Annie or against my present wife Amy. Uh, it's. Like my dad, I guess that I give him credit. He said, "You damn actors," yeah. meaning both men and women. You damn actors are nothing but a mutual admiration society, and we kind of are that way. Just the same way it was when I was in, uh, uh, I was a first lieutenant in military police, and on my discharge papers it said a, a equivalent civilian civilian job, a police chief. Anything you do in life uh, helps you out. The British school, I was, a, I was like that with Larry Olivier. He worked mm-hmm. out at Sig Klein's gym. And uh, Sig said, uh, I said, what's the matter, Sig? He said, oh, you pal over there. He's doing too much. He's going to hurt himself. He was doing bench presses. Go over there and, and tell him that what I said. So I went over there and sat there, and he said, he's, <clears throat> he's grunting it out. And I said, uh, I can't use the word he said, but I can <laughs> tell you that that's an Anglo-Saxon word and starts with F. So he said, what, Siggy says, uh, you're doing too damn much. And he said, I'll blitz him. And uh, I said, well, what are you doing anyway? He said, Spartacus, I won't let that blankety blank Kirk Douglas out physicalize me. <laughs> I said, What is the greatest thing for an actor? He said, Besides eyes and teeth, physical strength. So he was there doing The Entertainer, doing all those different shows, doing a matinee and an extra thing, but he was always at the gym. Uh, I saw him at the end of his life. I wasn't getting any work there. I was working like the Teamster said. He'll do anything for a buck. He was so frail that he had a a glass of ginger ale or something in one hand and a cigarette. He didn't smoke. So people wouldn't grab him and hurt him. Uh, But he was still there. And he was up at... uh, Mayor Koch's house and had a great, great troops of people came by. I went up and I gave him a British salute. I said, Sir Larry, he said, Larry. I said, yes, sir. I said, I used to work out at Sig Klein's gym. He got that bloody Sig, he almost broke my bloody back. And then I, I said, yes, sir. And, uh, 
all of a sudden the line stopped and Maureen Stapleton was a good friend of, um, of Geraldine Page and, and my friend. I worked with her on the stage with Maureen. Uh, and they said, Get back there. Larry wants to say something to you. Uh, he said, I just want to tell you, dear boy, you're a wonderful actor. I said, thank you, sir. Oh, wow. How wonderful. People think, and they've written about how jealous actors are. They will do. I've had people... Uh, do things, N never stage actors. Mm -hmm. you, you, to be a complete actor, you, you not have to get out there on the stage. Yeah. Um, but I sure like the money in the movies. 